Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to the Fly With Us podcast. This podcast is bringing the art of conversation, self-love, self-care, mental health care and protection, life lessons, love lessons, and everything in between. Today, we're going to talk about spiritual self-care. I'm Lady Bounce. I am Picket Fence. All right, so talk to us about spiritual self-care. What's our mindfulness minute? So get us in, engaged in this discussion. And even before I jump into the mindfulness minute, um, when we talk about spiritual self-care, it is having beliefs and values that are important to you that guide your life. Some okay. examples of spiritual self-care are meditating, reflecting and journal, going on a retreat, a retreat, or walking in nature. Those are all aspects of spiritual self-care. So our mindfulness minutes today is the unthankful heart discovers no mercies, but the thankful heart will find in every hour some heavenly blessing. Now, the reason I chose that for our mindfulness minute Um, Because when people think about spiritual self-care, the first thing they might think of is the church, the synagogue, the mosque, or the temple, which were all greats. We're not bashing anybody's spiritual practice here. Um, Your spiritual practice is your spiritual practice. Uh, But one thing that I wanted to let people know that is something that is simple that you can do to connect yourself to spirituality is gratitude of the ones that came before you. So what I'm talking about when I say that is respect and gratitude to your ancestors. Mm. You are an accumulation of every single ancestor that you have. For hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousand years. Everyone that is in your lineage, you have connection to. Their DNA is encoded in your DNA. Now we know because of science, you know, we always try to separate science and spirituality. We know scientifically now that some of those things besides We always hear about the bad. Your your mom has heart disease, you're gonna have heart disease. I remember going to the doctor um, when I was like a teenager and and said, uh, your mom has three kids, she's diabetic. One of y'all gonna be diabetic. Now that's not always true, but it is, it it does occasionally happen because of environmental things and uh, eating habits and things like that. So it's possible, but on the actual facts is, their DNA is laced with, your DNA is their DNA. Um, There's been studies on past trauma that you can feel the trauma of an ancestor because it's been embedded in the DNA. Um, So, you know, there's um, scientific studies now to saying that, especially when it comes to African-American in our country, that we have some post-traumatic slave trauma. Because it is in, that it was encoded in their DNA. Now, don't get me wrong. You can relieve yourself of your past trauma and even your ancestors' past trauma. That's why it's really important, at least in my practice, that you pay homage, gratitude, respect, love, and admiration to your ancestors for all that they've gone through and all that you will go through and you ask for guidance of them to see you through it. I like that. And, and just thinking about that, um, and, and any ancient culture, when you talk about in the Orient or Asia, India, Africa, any ancient culture, they all have a rituals devoted to ancestors. You can go to any Chinese restaurant right now, the one right around the corner from my house, when you go in there, there's an altar in there. 
Now, the average person might not know what that is or understand what it's about, but that altar is in there before their ancestors. So their ancestors are on the clock, on the grind with them right there, getting busy on the fried rice and the egg foo young. <laughs> and that's any, sometimes it's real small. You might not, not even notice it because it's right on the, the countertop. Um, but there's a pretty tall one at the one around the corner. So I, I think that that's an easy step to spirituality for those that might be turned off from the church or the mosque or what have you, or for whatever reason. We know, especially in the black church, there's a long line of trauma and, uh, you know, just wildness that kind of, I think in modern times, it makes people kind of run away from it. Um, not everybody. I still see a lot of people deeply into it. Um, but, you know, in the last couple of weeks, we've watched a lot of movies that have to deal with, like, seem like church trauma. And, you know, we both were in the church as youth. And I saw a lot of crazy stuff at church, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and uh, not to get into it or nothing like that, but for the people that are really, um, that might not feel comfortable, don't think that spiritual self-care is directly tied to church. There's a real, real great book that I had a few years back, and you have to Google the title if I'm, because I could be wrong. It's called, um, I think that it's called God Without Religion. Hmm. And it talks about having a connection with the source without having to go to church or having to say that I am a this, I am a that, you know. And uh, like I said, I'm not bashing anybody, but you can have God without having Jesus. That's just where I'm, I'm going to begin and end it there. <laughs> right. We don't want to, you know, turn anyone off or, or you know, whatever. What, I'm a firm believer in your connection with something higher than yourself is more important than what you call it. So different religions or different spiritual practices the 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 long and the short of it is is that you have a connection to something that is greater than yourself that you understand that you did not arrive here overnight and become this person or this thing this being that you are without something else being in the makeup of that so you know we've talked before about being self-made versus being god made versus being ancestrally made so it's about you know what you believe in you know and and you know when i when i see that i'm like seeing in my head right now that scene from car wash with richard Pryor, and they go you got to believe in something why not believe in me mm -hmm. <laughs> so in that regard i i believe that i am god god is of me god is within me and that is where I connect to. Um, because women are the only people on the planet, on the only beings, females, that can bring life, that makes me a god. Because I can create life. I can sustain life. And, you know, to be low level, I can bleed for seven straight days and not die. Who else could do that? So I firmly believe that that God is me, God is in me, God is of me. And when I'm moving around in my life, I make sure that I'm paying homage and respect to those who came before me and that have made it possible for me to do the things that I do and to be who I am. And as it relates to like my profession and giving back to those around me, I believe that that is putting my good karma out in the spiritual world that is going to come back to me in one form or another. Now, I don't do it because I'm expecting or hoping or longing for the karma to come back to me. I do it because it is what is right to do. But I'm a firm believer in what you put out into the universe is what you're going to reap in return. So I work very hard to maintain my spiritual connections to do the things that are going to put me in alignment with my beliefs and put me in line with the um, 
the prayers and the thoughts of those who came before me. We had a self-care assignment a few weeks ago where we talked about paying homage to, you know, your ancestors. And the tagline was, it was your grandmother's prayers are still protecting you. So I firmly believe that my grandmother, my great grandmother, my great great grandmother, who I was not able to meet, I believe her prayers are still protecting because she prayed for my grandma. She prayed, prayed for my great grandmother, which means in turn, she prayed for me too that she prayed for for the lifelines and the legacies that she left behind i'm included in that so i definitely you know i work to strengthen that connection i make sure that i um i quiet my mind so that i can listen to the spirit telling me what to do or telling me what not to do for that matter you know or or you know being there to give me the guidance that is needed i didn't get here you know, by myself, I'm not going to make it through this life by myself. I'm not going to be able to continue to do the work that I do by myself. So I, I definitely work hard to maintain that spiritual connection to something higher than myself. Because I recognize that the only way that I can do what I do and be who I am is because of that. You know, I didn't do this by myself. I'm not going to be able to do this by myself. You know, and I recognize that I embrace that. I believe that. And because I embrace it and I believe it, I make those moves. I order my steps in that in that path to, to make a difference and know that something greater is waiting for me because I maintain the spiritual connection to it all. Word up. And I like I said, that's in its simplest form what you can do if you just feel like if say that you, you you didn't grow up in church or you your parents didn't raise you in any type of spiritual practice that's something simple that you can do you know who your mother and your father were hopefully they were you know decent people to you growing up and if not you know who your grandparents were and 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 you know think of those simple acts of staying there for the weekends and the cookies and the cakes and the the home cooked meal or happen or if you at our age or even older going down south to big mama and them's house and milking the cows and things that and you know who they are if you can't put in your mind that some person in particular person that someone is telling that you have to be following and, and it doesn't just doesn't seem right to you like I said, that's a spiritual connection that you can start on is Big Mama. And if you're fortunate enough to know Big Mama's mama, or if you're a family that is uh that has kept track of your lineage, you know, great grandparents, great uncle Buck that was in the first world war, and so on and so forth. Um, that's you know, we talked about it before, but that's why I really enjoy uh that finding our roots and and seeing some people are very fortunate that they they can connect themselves back to our homeland um, because of records and and so on and so forth. Um, and sometimes you have to do it through genealogy. And I know a lot of people don't believe in those tests, but the science is, is close enough to give you a start. Right. Science is good enough to give you an additional tool in your path to um, finding your past. You know, it's the old, old saying, um, you know, about you can't go anywhere where you, if you don't know where you came from. And, and I think to two in a degree, that is, that's very true. Mm -hmm. and, and to just to give you a little more story on it, like I'm a person that had no connection with my father most of my life. I knew who he was, um, saw him when I was younger, but didn't see him growing up. You know, there was no fathering in my life, you know. But when we made that reconnection, I could have uh, been like, ah, you know, you know, bump you, blah, 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 blah. You wasn't there, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I know that I needed that connection and just went and just moved forward. You know, let me use this as a tool to find out more because him not being in my life, I didn't know his mom and 
her her parents, grandparents, so on and so forth. And luckily, I didn't waste time because not too many years after reconnected with him, he transitioned. So I could have wasted more time, you know. And, and I think that that is very important in spiritual practice is knowing your lineage. And even if you don't, you can say something simple that my teacher taught me and the rest of our team is um, you can say something simple as a gratitude to my ancestors, known and unknown. Because it's still the same lineage, even if you don't know great great grandmama's name, or great great grandpa's name, you know, or great 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 grandpa that was forced to change his name, you know. So you can say, I give thanks to my ancestors, known and unknown. Because the reason that it to me is a simple, direct step back to the source or God or whatever you want to call him because God created us you know in a lot of eastern traditions they talk about is you know I know some traditions think of God as a guy sitting up in the air somewhere but in a lot of ancient traditions God they explain you know we always say that God is within us and they explain it deeper that basically God was existence itself and it keeps unfolding we are the ripple in God's ocean and he lives through us that way because he's continuing and continuing. So if you're paying gratitude and respect to your ancestors, that is going to go directly back to the source at some point. So it's a simple practice that you can get into. And if you're interested in any other practice, it's a great time to, to look into it. Don't be afraid if people say, no, you got to have this. No, you got to do this. No, you got to say this. You have to do what works best for you, whatever that is. Exactly. You know, what is for me is for me. What is for you is for you. And that that even is, you know, your relationship to a higher power. Your connection is not my connection. Exactly. And it shouldn't be. It is it is something that is definitely yours and yours alone to cultivate to grow to strengthen nobody can do that for you nobody can tell you how to do it because what's for you is for you and what is for them is for them exactly like i said just go on your own journey take your own path cut off people if you find something that you want to study and somebody is in your ear i oh, don't do that blah, blah. I'm not saying cut them off like you're not cool or whatever. Don't right. talk about what you're doing because it's none of their business. Right. None of their concern. You get the books that, that, and the things that you are interested in and go hard body on it. Go hard body on it. I agree. So while you were talking, I looked up a little something about contemplative spiritual practices. So because we're we here at Fly With Us, we're going to help you do this not just tell you what to do we're going to help you do it so here are some really quick simple steps you can take they're called contemplative spiritual practices so you can journal you can mute you can listen to music you can do visualization uh loving kindness meditations which we've talked about on the show before stillness spiritual practices centering and meditating quieting your mind so that you can listen to that voice that we sometimes go, well, I didn't hear God or I asked for God to intervene and God, I didn't hear him. Well, he was talking, but you had so much chatter going on in your mind, you missed it. Um, Rational spiritual practices is deep listening, storytelling and a council circle. So often we are afraid or embarrassed to seek counsel from those who know more than us. Nothing brought me more joy as a kid. And especially when I got older, was being able to sit at my grandparents' feet and talk to them about their lives before they became parents, before they became grandparents. You were working on a movie and you were able to capture some of those stories. And and now that they are both gone, we have that record 
of their lives before they became the grandma and grandpa that we all knew that they had a whole life you know growing up and how things were for them as children and being able to connect to our ancestors in that regard because the stories that my grandmother told about my great grandmother which was her mother was a very different experience than I had with my great grandmother as a child so hearing my grandmother talk about her you know in that regard and being able to know her that way and connect with her was really amazing because the way that I knew her when I was a child it, it was completely different. You almost wouldn't even realize that it was the same person. So that, you know, that's definitely important. You can strengthen your active spiritual practices by working and volunteering. People talk about taking pilgrimages to Mecca, to Egypt, those, those types of places. If you can afford it, that's great. If not, there are some things you can do that are low budget. You can attend vigils and marches. Of course, you can connect with your local spiritual center. Movement spiritual practices include yoga, going through labyrinths, walking, walking meditation, and dance, which you've talked about before. When we dance, we are connecting to our ancestors. When you are doing your walking meditation, you are really drawing forth the spirit of those who came before you, and you don't even necessarily realize it because it's not something that you're actively trying to do. And that is when your ancestors and those spirit spiritual practices really come into play when you're not trying to access them you're just kind of being and that's when they come to you so the last one in this contemplative spiritual practices is about ritual and silico spiritual practices taking retreats establishing a sacred or personal space or altars doing spiritual ceremonies and rituals based on your spiritual practice or cultural traditions so those cultural traditions are those things that that happened maybe even before your grandparents were thought of into existence. So if you are able to connect with grandparents or great grandparents or even great great grandparents, ask them about those spiritual practices and rituals that they that they participated in and that they used to get them to where they are now in a place of spirituality. And if you if you don't have anyone in your family that you can ask, there are billions of ways to research that and maybe find an, an old spiritual practice that works best for you now. You know, because most of those things do go kind of in a cycle. Every hundred years, you know, things repeat themselves. And in some cases, fewer than a hundred years, things circle back around. So you can find those things to connect to the the bottom line is to just find ways to connect to something higher than yourself definitely definitely i love that i like that a lot yeah i'm about to send that to you yeah like i said that's like you said it's basically about connecting with that thing that is higher than yourself and i think that's the that's the goal in any religious practice that's what the goal is they just may call it a certain name and they say you have to do it in a certain order a certain way but like you said a few minutes ago you do what works for you because what works for you is for you for real so let's uh get into our self-care assignment for this week where we at here reconnect with your spiritual side it's human nature to maintain a connection with the connections that are important to us, such as with friends and family. We lose the all important connection. Then we do what we can to get it back. When it comes to our spiritual side, we often don't make the same kind of effort like we do with family and friends. Losing our connection to our spiritually spirituality is much like a domino effect. We lose one thing, then another, and another, until we get to a point where we feel drained and struggle to keep ourselves intact from the inside out. Make an effort to spend time reconnecting with your spiritual side. Rest, reflect, read spiritual writings, or talk with an spiritual advisor. Mm. So this week, we want you to reflect 
on what's missing in your life spiritually and set out a plan, whether talking to a spiritual advisor or it doesn't have to be someone you already know. It could be a spiritual advisor and a spirituality that you're interested in. Seek out that person or a contact um, and get some one, two steps, a one, two step on your path back to spirituality. If you, if you're still in a church and you just haven't been to church, talk to someone that you know, that you feel is a good pastor, bishop, or, or what have you. If you're into more of an um, African spirituality, look somebody up online, watch some videos online. If you are into Buddhism, go find the local temple in your area. If you're into Islam, find a local mosque and, and, you know, and see if it would be okay to come in and sit in on whatever day they need. I like it. Word up. Word up. Now to my favorite part of this show. Boom, 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 boom. Brain science, science, science. All right. So spiritual self-care. Don't let the name of this one fool you. This form of self-care applies to everyone, religious, atheist, agnostic, or otherwise. Spiritual self-care encompasses any activities you engage in to connect with and nurture your soul. This practice is fundamentally about connecting with your inner spirit, which for some may include activities that honor a belief in a higher power, God, the universe, or whatever happens to float your boat, as we've said before but may look entirely different for others. Some examples of spiritual self-care can include spending time in nature. That's that walking meditation that Pickett talked about, that he talks about a lot. That walking meditation is important. Engaging in prayer or attending a worship service, doing yoga. A lot of people have said that that deep breathing with yoga fuels the connection to the spirit, to a higher power. So that is, that's a great way to do that. Volunteering for a cause that you care about. Creating a vision board or doing something else that lights you up and inspires you. So when it comes to spiritual self-care, as with any self-care, there is no wrong way to do it. The whole point and the goal is that you are connecting to something bigger, brighter, and higher than yourself. And in connecting with that higher something, it's really keeping you grounded and it keeps you humble. Word. 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 So that's it? I mean, unless you got something else for the people. Um, Before we run over, just another quick thing that I thought of that you can, anybody can do this. Even a baby can do this. Especially now that we're heading uh, towards summer, we just enter spring. Something that you connect yourself spirit to the spiritual realm. Go outside in the grass, barefoot. Whoa! I know that might creep some people out, but go outside in the grass, barefooted. It's a way to ground yourself to the earth, which is a spiritual being itself all on its own it's a spiritual being itself you don't have to say anything just connect yourself to the earth that provides so much for it's a spaceship it's a spaceship that, that produces food out of it 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 gives us water it gives us air wind and, and it's got this big ball of fire above it <laughs> you know, we got the elements all in one magnificent living being of its own. So that's something you can simply do. It's warm outside, go outside barefooted. Try it. <laughs> Try it. All right. So if you need more tips about physical self care, spiritual self care, financial self care, or any type of mental health care and protection, pick it, tell them where to find us. You can find us on Facebook, IG, and Twitter. And for the podcast, you can find the podcast anywhere you find your favorite podcast. If you would like to contribute a dollar a month or more, you can hit us up on the Patreon account. 
which is also Fly With Us Podcast. We are the Fly With Us Podcast. We'd like to take a journey with you. Hop on in our rocket ship and take flight. I'm your boy, Picket Fence. I'm Lady Bounce. We out of here. Peace. Peace.